Zongbo. I'm Ashok Tirwa. We have Palzur Gebak in this week's Radio on TV. One time he was a model. Now he's a managing director of his own project called Project Bhutan. And we'll find out more about him as we talk with him. Welcome, Palzur. Thank you for inviting me. So what I know is you went to India to study microbiology. Yes. Then the later you turned into a model. How did that happen? Accidental. <laughs> I happened to participate for one of the fashion shows in the mm -hmm. college, which actually happens to be quite a rage among students down there. Mm -hmm. Fashion happens to be a primary thing in Bangalore mm -hmm. back then in 2003. So I happened to participate for the fashion show and then started getting a lot of offers after that. Mm -hmm. Then uh, as, as I graduated from college, I was juggling my time with uh, taking fashion show as a part-time job and... Mm -hmm. Uh, the the other full time job was working in a call center, mm -hmm. so until then I was not really um, I wouldn't call it passionate or anything of that sort, but um, very much focused towards modeling or anything of mm -hmm. that sort. So until I applied for the Gladrex contest in two thousand six, mm -hmm. and then I happened to reach the top five. I was selected from the whole of South India. So how many people were there? Uh, there were lacks of entries actually. Mm -hmm. I filled up a form from the Gladrex magazine. Mm -hmm. You fill up the form and then uh, you apply, you send in a close-up shot, a mid-length and mm -hmm. a full-length shot of yours, mm -hmm. uh, portfolio we call it, mm -hmm. and then you wait for your reply. Mm -hmm. So I happen to be selected amongst uh, the whole of South India consisting of the states of Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Kerala. Mm -hmm. There were 500 con contestants selected for the preliminary audition down mm -hmm. in South India, mm -hmm. of which from those 500, again, we had another round of audition mm -hmm. and then uh, I was the only one selected. And you happen to be someone from Bhutan. Yes, I think that could be another, um, that could have been a bonus point, you know, mm -hmm. since I added the international factor to the pageant, mm -hmm. probably that could have been another mm -hmm. uh, bonus. So, oh, now for the understanding of our viewers, could you talk about what is this Gladrax to participate in this Gl Gladrax pageant? Mm -hmm. Gladrax is a national pageant. It's a mm -hmm. unisex pageant, basically, mm -hmm. where both male and female can mm -hmm. apply for the contest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's open to all, actually. They are open to foreigners also to partake in the pageant. Mm -hmm. So that's why, had I participated for Grassy Miss India, I wouldn't have uh, fulfilled the criteria since mm -hmm. I'm a foreigner. So back then, it was Grassy Mister India and Gladrax that were the, the, the top-level contests mm -hmm. in the field of modeling that one could apply for. Mm -hmm. And Gladrax happened to be which I, uh, I could fulfill all the criteria mm -hmm. to be in Glad Rags. And they believe Glad Rags to be, um, what do you say? It's a, it's a contest that brings out stars mm -hmm. like John Abraham, Arjun Rampal, mm -hmm. Dino Mori, and there's so many famous uh, mm -hmm. present day Bollywood actors, they all come mm -hmm. from Glad Rags. So exciting thing to know about is when you contested there in the Glad Rags pageant, yes. you made it. I made it you to top five. Top five, top and then five you got and some I won awards. two titles as well. Mm -hmm. that, the best model and Mr. Elegant 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 title. Mm -hmm. After that, there was no looking back. Mm -hmm. I thought of taking it as a full-fledged profession, mm -hmm. you know, because I thought I should give modeling a serious thought and maybe, you know, uh, unlike other people, just be one direction and look mm -hmm. into it from the point of uh, actually making a career out of it and then mm -hmm. that's how we went into modeling mm -hmm. full-time. Then that. after that, you st also started getting a lot of offers a Could lot of offers talk? after that because as soon as I returned from Mumbai to Bangalore mm -hmm. I immediately uh, struck a deal with Fast Track Glasses for, mm -hmm. to do a commercial ad with John Abraham mm -hmm. so I was uh, I did an ad TV ad with John Abraham for Fast Track Glasses followed by a music video for Kumar Sanu mm -hmm. for his new album uh, Fusion mm -hmm. and then then it happened a like, lot of catalog shoots print ads for Lenovo mm -hmm. computers Lee Jeans a lot of um brands I worked for after that. Pe people have this conception that when you want to be a model, you should have certain kind of physics, height. Mm -hmm. What for do you think about For modeling, it? these are the, the basic criteria mm -hmm. is the height. Mm -hmm. Physique one can always mm -hmm. build, you know, mm -hmm. but height is something that's, mm -hmm. that's like a God's gift. Mm -hmm. And uh, only blessed one mm -hmm. <laughs> gets it. So, uh, yeah, la, you have to build up on your physique and it's not only about the, the overall Outlook, you mm -hmm. know, you also have to be well prepared from inside. You have to have mm -hmm. a good presentation from inside. Overall, you call it a personality, good personality mm -hmm. to, so that you, when you are placed amongst a lot of people, you know, mm -hmm. you stand out amongst them. Mm -hmm. You have an edge over them mm -hmm. if you have the inner quality to present mm -hmm. yourself well. 
So, so that did is you, another did factor. Did you have to work hard to groom yourself from what you were before you went into modeling? We had a one month intensive grooming mm-hmm. during the glad rags days. So I think uh, I really implied that knowledge when after I finished the glad rags once I finished the contract with glad rags then I started grooming my own models aspiring models who mm-hmm. really wanted to join the field of modeling mm-hmm. I helped them channelize you know guide them the mm-hmm. right way so by grooming them and then making their portfolio giving them opportunities as such mm-hmm. so, so I used to do that in India Then later on you also went on to establish your own academy yes, in India. Yes, la. Could you talk about it? I was in uh, so w- once f- I returned to Bangalore um, maybe after a year or so I came back to Mumbai. Mm-hmm. Then I was working there as a full-fledged model for about two years. Mm-hmm. So I was doing all the top fashion week the Lakme mm-hmm. Wills lifestyle. I was totally into it until when the chairman of my uh, the college where I studied Uh, called me like mm-hmm. he called me and then he told me why don't you come back and do something for the college students mm-hmm. and such so we sat down for a while and then we discussed on this matter and then he to, uh, we decided that yeah we i start off an academy of mm-hmm. personality development you know just to work mm-hmm. out on um just to give the students of garden city college an extra edge of mm-hmm. uh, you know compared to the other mm-hmm. colleges so before we uh, go to why you had to come back to bhutan and then talk about the project bhutan you also will a little bit talk about your the work that you did it apart from modeling in india you also did worked in us yes i i went to the us for a uh, for a short span of time mm. i got a couple of international offers from there as mm. well so i was uh, uh, it was more of a photo session kind of mm. a thing a print modeling you call that mm. So it was a three months kind of a contract wow. which I worked out with them. Okay, but so that added a lot. That added mm. the international factor. So mm. that again, when I returned back to mm. India, and that was a plus point. Again. Plus point. Yes. But when you were doing fine, and then when you had everything going, yes, academy, your modeling mm. career, but you had to come back. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I still ask that question, but I'm I'm very much um, pleased and glad that I'm back here mm-hmm. to you know. do something out of my own passion mm-hmm. and it's not like uh, now i'm trying to make a business out of mm-hmm. it and such mm-hmm. it's taking time it's just been a year and a half but then yes of course i've already established my office and mm-hmm. i have a couple of staffs working mm-hmm. under me um my main motive of year to start a project bhutan mm-hmm. is you know i want to open up avenues for um people who are really into and inclined towards fashion mm-hmm. as such You can be a stylist, you can be a photographer, you can be a designer, you can be a model, you can also be an actor. Mm-hmm. Project Bhutan is the platform where they come into this, they get mm-hmm. well-groomed, they understand the nuances of the industry, and then we channelize them into their whatever field of passion mm-hmm. they have. Okay, so that's we'll talk we about that. more about Project Bhutan later. But um, just before that, um, you told me that you also sing and you have a uh, few albums or one album. Oh. one album that oh. just happened to be you know out of the blue we just uh, struck a chord you know with one of my friend me and mm. my friend Darshan Thapa we were down mm. in Bangalore and mm. we were just sitting uh, chatting over music and stuff and then suddenly mm. we, we just came up with a couple of tunes you mm-hmm. know and we said I, i said that we we need to do something about mm. it mm-hmm. so he started bringing the tunes and the guitar and then i started you know writing the lyrics for the mm-hmm. song and that's, that's, that's how it happened we were supposed to record it down in india but the since the cost of production was mm-hmm. quite a lot then we thought we why not come back to bhutan and do it okay. for a cause as such and it was not for any commercial mm-hmm. thing or anything it was just purely passion just mm-hmm. that i wanted to do something and mm-hmm. you know in the field of music mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. probably set an example to many of the youth also mm-hmm. such so we came over here and recorded the album karma in m studio okay so we'll play that song the first song from that album it's titled why why so yeah. could you tell us something about it what this, is that song this, about this song in circles around is again the youth mm-hmm. uh as of now what you see the youth are totally into um you know many of the youth fall into depression mm-hmm. why So there are a lot of instances and there are a lot of situations as to how they fall into depression. Mm-hmm. Why do they get into drugs? Mm-hmm. Jobless. Sometimes uh, they're not able to do what they want to do in life. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of um, reasons for that. So it's more like a moral talk or a moral song, which actually tells them that you know this is not the end for you. Mm-hmm. 
And this is not a dead end. This is just a U-turn for you, you know, mm-hmm. that you can do something out of that. Mm. There are a lot of things you need to do. You just need to think about it mm. well. And then, you know, everything is in here, like, basically. Okay. You know. So, Paljo has a song lined up for us called Why from his own album. album. Please enjoy it. There are choices Welcome back. We are in conversation with Paljo Gebak, the managing director of Project Bhutan and one time a serious model. And you are not the first model that did well in India. Yeah, you were the first model. First model. And after that you you are the next guy who after made it big. After a long span of time then yes. Yes. So uh, now after having come back to Bhutan why you didn't want to take a regular job and do something <coughs> on your own or start a project like Project Bhutan? Uh, I don't know. My mind works a little differently. Mm. Uh, I wanted to create a business out of this, mm. business out of my passion. Mm. So I thought first maybe do a couple of shows as such. Mm-hmm. So I was totally, I was concentrating more into event management, organizing shows, but quality shows, not the everyday shows and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, quality shows. So what we have is now so far we have already. Uh, uh, successfully completed three seasons of Project Bhutan. Mm. The first season was more of a makeover show. We had all the parties, the participants register for the uh, the grooming session, and then we had um, as soon as we finished the grooming session, we made the portfolio, and then we had the makeover mm. session for them. Something like the before and after sequence kind of thing. Mm. Season two, I I invited a court. Um, people for, of the fashion fraternity from India, mm-hmm. um, like Shilpi Chaudhary, she is more into the creative designs and stuff. So she presented my finale for my season two and I had invited also Mr. Robert Naran, who happens to be a Bollywood celebrity makeup artist, and um, uh, Miss India 2011, Diana Irapal. Mm-hmm. And there was one supermodel from Mumbai, her name is Ricky Chatterjee. They were my guests for season two. Season three was, I wanted to go for the international. Mm-hmm. I called in uh, two of uh, two supermodels from Europe. I somehow collaborated with Karma Modeling Agency from the, of Delhi. Mm-hmm. And then somehow I collaborated with them and brought in these models. And of course, my usual models from India as well. They mm-hmm. were along with uh, Robert Narayan, then mm-hmm. Ajla Sazdev, the f- mm-hmm. she starred in the fashion film with Priyanka Chopra. Mm-hmm. She's one of the top fashion choreographers of mm-hmm. India. She came in for my show as well. Okay. Who pays you for all this? Uh, Who pays all the expenses? No, I have, I have had a tough time with sponsors, with domestic mm-hmm. sponsors as such, but somehow I managed it. Mm-hmm. And uh, for my season three, I had a couple of Indian sponsors also coming in. That made it... Um, possible for me to do an mm-hmm. event of such a caliber. Okay. So, but it's it's very difficult getting sponsors. Organizing an event of such magnitude in Bhutan is mm-hmm. almost next to impossible. But somehow I've been fighting it and I've been doing it. Okay. And keeping fingers crossed. <laughs> so did you face some uh, difficulties or was it easy to o- do something on your own to open a project like Project Bhutan? in country like this where it was an do you think we task. are prepa- prepared for all that uh we are actually mm-hmm. the mindset of people are changing now mm-hmm. see uh, five years ago people were not ready they didn't understand the whole concept of fashion and what mm-hmm. fashion is not just about you know dressing up and going to parties and stuff mm-hmm. fashion is all about presenting yourself day to day be it in your office be it outside wherever you are it's all about fashion and presenting yourself. Mm. Now, what I'm trying to portray through fashion is, you know, bringing out your personal personality, bringing out your entire outlook through fashion. Fashion adds the glamour uh, factor mm-hmm. to a person. Now, you see, I, if I tell a person, like, okay, I'm going to groom you well. Mm-hmm. I'm going to teach you the nuances. I'm going to teach you uh, different kinds of etiquette as such. Mm-hmm. You know? Does it sound appealing? No. But if I say I'm going to teach you all this through fashion, then there'll be a lot of children, there'll be a lot of young adults coming in for this. Mm. 
So you so actually had no. Using the glam uh-huh. factor, uh-huh. I'm also at the same time simultaneously helping these youngsters to actually, you know, bring out themselves, get rid of that inferiority complex. La. So a lot of youngsters have registered lot in project. A lot of youngsters. A lot of. As we go by the season, you know, we mm-hmm. have uh, a larger group turning in. Mm-hmm. That's how it has been, and I hope it turns out to be that way again in the future. So, what is big? I mean, when you're saying big, you have like I don't see any thousand? limits as of now. Mm-hmm. I, no, thousand as of now. would be impossible to mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. at a go. Mm-hmm. Um, so, say hundred in a batch, mm-hmm. that would be big. So, uh, oh, how many have you groomed so far? That's what I wanted. My last season, I had about sixty la, turn mm-hmm. in. First batch. The first batch, I had about forty. Forty people, 40 turn, people up. Okay. turn up. Forty people turn up. Young and old. Paying the registration fee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now this is a one-time registration fee. Mm-hmm. What you need to pay first, mm-hmm. you know. I say like, okay, you're coming into Project Bhutan. There's a certain registration. Why? Because we cannot rely on sponsors of you. Mm-hmm. What if the sponsor says no at the eleventh hour? Then how mm-hmm. are we going to keep our promises, right? Mm-hmm. So this registration fee is more like a backup, as such. You know, just in mm-hmm. case worst comes to worst, mm-hmm. we're not able to get sponsors as mm-hmm. such. We rely on that. So looking from the income point of view, it's very nominal. Okay, you uh, then you conducted one uh, season with the children also, right? Yes, no, uh-huh. we have every season. Now, uh-huh. see, uh, uh-huh. in season one we had the kids and the uh-huh. young adults, uh-huh. two batches. Uh-huh. Season two was the same. Uh-huh. Season three was the, the parents of the kids who were coming in for the grooming classes when they see the kids changing, you know, uh-huh. over out. Uh, it's because see, it's not like we um, we create that ambience, we create that atmosphere. We are no magicians to change a kid uh, overnight, mm-hmm. but we create that atmosphere where a kid automatically, no matter how he or she is very shy or, um, you know, uh, an introvert, we somehow they somehow open up. Mm-hmm. Even I'm surprised to see that, you mm-hmm. know. But somehow they open up and they they are really, maybe it's been the passion that's been inside mm-hmm. them, you know. But they open up mm-hmm. automatically and they change. Okay. There's a drastic change, a dramatic change in them. Okay, now seeing the children change, so seeing the, the children change, mothers let mothers it have approached me saying that why don't you do something for the young mothers as well? Mm-hmm. So that's why in season three I had this category called the young moms, mm-hmm. and they were really they were they were, they were good, amazing. So you you have also organized after you established Project Putan, you have organized other events. Would you like to talk about a few of them? I have done a lot of events after Project Bhutan, apart from the seasonal shows what we have annually. Uh, I've collaborated with Norling events for the Sechu uh, mm-hmm. festival. There also I had my children and the mm-hmm. young adults walk in and uh, I gave the platform to my designers as well. Mm-hmm. Recently, uh, at the beginning of this year, I took a fashion team with me, a 15-member team with me to Manipur to participate for the Manipur Fashion Extravagance. Now that is a huge uh, platform for these youngsters who are going mm-hmm. and they get to rub shoulders with all the top models down there. Because um, uh, it was not only the Northeast designers who were participating, and then Bhutan being the only country, uh, the foreign country participating for that. Uh, apart from that, they were all top designers from all over India coming in for that. So I think it was a great opportunity for my, my models and also my designers to actually promote our fabrics and our textiles there. So you collaborated with Shaba Bhutan and what kind of response did you receive? Shaba Bhutan provided, provided us with materials mm-hmm. to um, actually uh, showcase mm-hmm. down there at the mm-hmm. Manipur Fashion Extravaganza. Mm-hmm. And what they did is they provided us with also ready-made materials and they also provided us with raw materials wherein I had my youth designers coming mm-hmm. in and they made something really appealing out of it. Mm-hmm. And then we had a separate sequence as such. Like I divided the sequence. Mm-hmm. First was for the Saba, second was for my youth designers, mm-hmm. and then there were other designs as well, like, which we presented, but all Bhutanese. All okay, Bhutanese. so what kind of response did you receive after that? Re- response was enormous, la. Mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. from the Indian media, was mm-hmm. really good. La. Mm-hmm. It was really good, but uh, this is just a stepping stone. It's mm-hmm. just we're taking one baby step after mm-hmm. another. Uh, we're looking at participating for huge fashion weeks like Lakme Fashion Week. Will's lifestyle, where mm-hmm. I partook as a model, mm-hmm. but this time I want to take my team as such down there and actually present our Bhutanese fabrics also down there. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for the right time to, uh, right time, la, wherein we hit the international market. Okay. So, how does it work once you present uh, the fabrics? Yes. In, in a sh- once you showcase our fabrics in a platform like that, and then 
how does the if market talk, works? If you're talking about a serious fashion week like Lakme Fashion mm-hmm. Week, we have serious buyers coming in. Mm-hmm. Buyers from the international market also coming in actually. Apart from celebrities of the Bollywood mm-hmm. uh, fraternity, but you also have um, serious buyers from the fashion industry coming from outside. Mm-hmm. So you never know. La. It's just like, you know, I'm just doing my part as mm-hmm. of now. And waiting for that right moment, mm-hmm. like, you know, wherein I'm, you might just strike a deal with any mm-hmm. one of these big brands from outside. So basically, basically what you're doing is you're letting people know that we have stuff like this. Exactly. And then you're waiting for them for your reaction. Is that right, what you're right, saying? Right, right, right. And at the same time, giving a platform for these designers, you know, you mm-hmm. never know someone what might make something really appealing. And then mm-hmm. one day, you mm-hmm. know, just that's what I'm just waiting for mm-hmm. the right mm-hmm. moment now. So do do we have a lot of designers here or oh, who has potential in Bhutan? A lot, mm-hmm. a lot. We also have this uh, Go Youth Go has been promoting this uh, event and it's now they just finished the second season. Mm-hmm. It's called the Najinista where they promote uh, youth designers. Mm-hmm. So that's how I, um, somehow I was judging the last year Ghi Najinista and that's how I go, uh, got in touch with these youth designers. So I told them, why not you work for me? design outfits and then you present them in my shows you know and let's see right now it's um, it's something that is not sustainable but uh, down the line maybe five years down the line you 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 would actually seeing you would actually see yourself as a um, taking it as a full fledged profession you know mm-hmm. opening your own boutique and operating from your boutique so at the, um, when you are trying to help yourself you are also helping other people like who are interested in this area of work mm-hmm. that's basically what you're doing yes can i sum that up right okay then the other thing is now you have a lot of other projects yes that are coming up you said that you are ambassadors to of uh, audi this and that oh yeah oh uh, well, uh, tell us about to, it <laughs> to be precise <laughs> um See, since I'm into event management and I also, I'm also into brand promotion and such. Now, we have a lot of commitments with our sponsors. Mm-hmm. Normally, you just go out there and say, I will put your, uh, your poster in my, on my banner as such. You know, this is which normal other event organizers do mm-hmm. as well. But from, from my side, it's, I'm giving them a whole package as such. La. So what's the package? So I have a technical team who mm-hmm. works for me and then we do make corporate ads. We do make corporate films. I, had, I have a huge brigade of models who are ready to work for me. La. So I take my models and add a little bit of a glam factor mm-hmm. to it again and then, you know, uh, help uh, these uh, our sponsors in making their catalogs, with the catalog shoots, television ads and such. That. And this is how I got in touch with one of the new companies uh, mm-hmm. where now uh, Volkswagen and in, uh, Audi also mm-hmm. coming to Bhutan. So mm-hmm. um, somehow I got in touch with a common friend and then... I've I've got a, I signed a contract with them. Mm-hmm. We am promoting the vehicles over here. Mm. As a model, is, or you? you uh, I I wouldn't call it as a model, or, but as a as an ambassador, mm-hmm. as an ambassador, mm-hmm. I would helping in promote and market the vehicle here in the country. Okay, so Audi in Bhutan will be associated with Paljo Kaiba. Uh, not Paljo Kaiba, but Project Bhutan. Project I would Bhutan. Okay. That way, <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Uh, Thank you very much, Paljo, for joining us. Anytime. Uh, we wish you all the best of luck. And then we also wish to see a see lot of other models from Bhutan because since you are trying to groom them and encourage them so yes. that we'll have more people participating, not not only at a national level but international level. And we wish you all the luck. I think luck. we should stick to the optimism. Yeah. It's only with optimism that you move forward mm-hmm. and you see things happening. Mm-hmm. When you practically do things, then you see things happening mm. rather than just talk about mm. it more. Mm. So I'm I'm doing that. I'm just following that philosophy right now and mm-hmm. just seeing how far I can go with this. Simple as that. Okay. So I'll simply say that we wish you luck for Thank that. Thank you so much. Mm. Thank you so much. And we wish to see you better than what you have today. Thank you very much for joining us. And this has been another episode of Radio on TV with Paljo Gebak and the Managing Director of Project Bhutan. Do join us next time. I'm Ashok Thiruwa. This is goodbye.